You see, as we go up the roof slope here, we're going to now come to a, a penetration in the roof, particularly here a, a pipe. And we're going to need to flash around that pipe. Uh, Isaiah Industries would recommend a, a flashing something like this. Uh, for our seal products, it's good to use a galvanized pan with a rubber neoprene boot. And as, as you can see, this boot simply going to sit down on top of the pipe. And we want this pan to drain out on top of our shingles. Um, if this particular course had ended up somewhere up here, I would actually do an underturn hem to try to hook around the butt of the shingle uh, into this top lock. Uh, here that's not going to be possible. Uh, I will do a half an inch underturned hem here. And I'm going to do a half an inch upturned hem on both sides and on the back. Mark a half an inch, half an inch, all the way around. Remember at the bottom of the flashing, I'm going to do an underturn hem, one half of an inch. I'm going to take the flashing over to a portable brake. Turn it up about 135 degrees. I do the sides first and then the top. And at the half an inch point, I'm going to uh, cut a couple of reliefs here in the side. Rounding the corners a little for appearance sake. And this bottom hem will simply give it a, a finished appearance. I'm simply going to put it back in to flatten that out a little more. Uh, once I get the flashing out of the brake, I um, kind of noticed that my side hems were a little high. Uh, they could possibly interfere with the uh, shingle. So I want to flatten this a little. That when we put the underlayment on, that we allowed uh, the underlayment to come up around the pipe just a little. Uh, you can put roofing cement or sealant around this as, as well. Come back, seat it fully down to the deck. And now I can take nail clips, one on each side. If I am concerned about the possibility of this pan being a, an aesthetic uh, concern for the homeowner, I can simply take a piece of coil stock and cut it out to fit up at the front of the pan. This top here will be covered by the shingle and then we're going to put a cone over the top to, to protect this boot. So this pretty well covers everything up except just this little bit of exposed metal, which uh, could be painted with touch-up paint. Once you've got this piece of coil stock in place, you can come back and, and crimp the side hems just a little so that it, it uh, stays in place. Um, also, it's possible to put a couple of vertical beads of sealant underneath um, in order to keep it attached as well. It really doesn't matter if the water goes under this or over the top. Either way, it's going to come out on top of the shingle below. I need to uh, make a cutout uh, through the butt of the shingle in order to go up around uh, the rubber boot here. 
And the first thing I want to do is I want to place the shingle all the way into the, the sidewall panel, or sidewall flashing here. And then come over and mark uh, the sides here. Um, down about here. And eyeballing this should pretty well be sufficient. I'm going to come over to the side and note how far I need to come and back. At the top, I'm going to be about right, right there. I'm going to split the difference here, and basically I want to I want to do a semicircle cut out here. And then straight down. I'm probably going to make this just a little tight because it's really no problem to enlarge this if I have to. So I'll set it in place to see if I'm pretty much where I need to be, want to be. And that, that looks pretty good. I'm going to take this and this with my hand flangers. I'm going to bend it up just a little so if I did have any moisture there it would tend to go outside. But the real reason that I'm doing this is that I don't want the sharp edges of the shingle to cut into the rubber boot that's around the pipe. So by turning up these edges I hopefully uh, avoid that difficulty. Another thing that I need to take into account here is the fact that I've, I've got to do, I've got to cut the butt of the shingle out to the edge of the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. As you can see, we have uh, shingled up our roof now to the place of the vent pipe. We've put our uh, flashing down and shingled around it. Now, this neoprene boot that comes with the flashing is something that can uh, dry out over a period of eight or ten years, and it's a, it's a potential leak point that. Uh, an installer really doesn't want to have to deal with several years down the road. So what we want to do uh, at Isaiah Industries is to cover that neoprene boot so that the sun's uh, harmful UV radiation can't get to it and dry it out. And what we've come up with is a, a cone and a, a pattern for making these cones that is specific to the particular opening size of the pipe, as well as specific for the different pitches of the roof. And you can see that here's zero pitch, 312, 512, 712, 912, and 1112. And of course, we can extrapolate in between if it's an 812 or a 1212 or whatever it might be. You can see that it has uh, two hems, one underturned, one upturned. And um, this pattern came. This cone came right from this pattern, and you can see we did a notch in here because I want to step up over the shingle. So these two hems on the back side hook together. I've cut the opening at three and a half inches, which is the diameter of my pipe. And that may be fit just a little tight. I had to come back and trim out another eighth of an inch or so. And you can see that it fits very nicely down over the top of the pipe. 
And again, I, I notched it out so that it would step up onto this next course of shingles. I would then, after putting that in place, take a marker and I'm going to mark exactly where this, this pipe, excuse me, where this uh, cone is going to come down to. I'm going to take it back up. And then I'm going to take my caulking gun with my sealant and I'm going to run a bead of sealant right above that line so that when I put the cone back in place it's going to come down and that sealant is going to seal that uh, gap between the cone and the pipe. So in all reality this uh, neoprene boot probably won't see any water and is definitely not going to see the sun so it should last the lifetime of the roof. Again I'm going to slide that back down in place. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's, it's snug and then I'm going to take my sealant gun and I'm going to seal all the way around the top down to here and maybe even some of this as well, but I do want to leave a little bit of a gap down here so that any water that would get behind it could drain out. The other uh, part to this that's ex also explained in these, the cone pattern, is to make a, a sleeve to cover the rest of the pipe. And because castle wood is steel, it's, it's pretty hard to roll the steel and have it uh, turn out in a uniform fashion without uh, creases running every which way. So I, uh, I took this and I, I put uh, bends in it every one inch all the way around. Now the question we might ask is how, how do we know how um, wide of a piece of coil stock I need to cut in order to make this? Well, there's a formula in uh, mathematics that says that the circumference, that is the distance around the pipe, is just a little more than three times the diameter of the pipe. Actually about three and one-seventh or 3.14. So I measure my pipe at three and a, three and a half inches. I multiply that by 3.2. And I come up with about 11 inches. So I know it's going to take me 11 inches to go around. I need a half an inch for one hem. I need a half an inch for the other hem. I need a little more than a half an inch for the overlap between the two. And I'm going to add about a half an inch more just for, for good fit. So I'm going to go about two inches more than the circumference of the pipe. So I had 11 inches of circumference. I cut this to about 13 inches wide. I measured this height from here to here and I added about a half an inch. So I should be able to hook these together. And I'm going to make sure my hem is going the same direction as the hem on the back. Although nobody's probably ever going to see it. And that's going to slide right down. And uh, I'm going to put sealant inside at the top where it meets the pipe. And again, sealing around the back side as well. And this should be a good watertight system that does an excellent job of protecting that vulnerable neoprene boot. As well as, aesthetically, uh, making this an attractive feature on the roof that color matches the rest of the roof.